I want to know, as you, you listed all of these countries that are the best places to live, um, they're ranked top 10, whatever. All of those countries, they tend to be Northwestern European white yep. countries. Do you think there's some kind of racial bias in that? South Korea uh, and uh, what was it, uh, Japan, and there was, another, uh, there was another East Asian country in there, and I can't remember which one it was. Was it South Vietnam? Taiwan. I didn't say all of them were European, yeah, but the majority I, I, I are. Is there a bias? There was, like, there was a, a, an imbalance. Do you think that's racist? I don't know. I don't so know it could what possibly the, be racist. I, okay. As I said, as I, I went through a collection of different things, and they're also, all of the lists are saying that they're, they're ordering by different criteria. I don't know what everybody's criteria is in every case. I thought that the best way to do that would be to take a collection of lists and see who fares on everybody's list. But shouldn't it make us wonder that you know, all the best places to live happen to be white? <laughs> I don't know, again, what the criteria, what everyone's criteria is. It you don't be, need to know the I, criteria, I think it would you be can strange, look at the results. I think it would be strange to say that a group of lists that include Asian countries are necessarily racist. Do they, uh, they, there are no African if, countries. If I'm, doing, if I'm doing a collection of different lists, and these are, these are the criteria that they're listing is for economic opportunity or what have you, for all of these different things. While I looked and said, There's, you know, these European countries show up an awful lot here. Either Europe is the best place to live, or every one of these people are lying and they're racist. <laughs> so white, places, white countries are the best places to live. I said Europe. Right, we're playing, we're, playing, we're playing risk now, and so we're going to pick a continent. But they're white. Like These European countries are white. Yes, There I are know. no African countries on the list. There are no South American countries on the list. Yeah, so and we understand. We don't need to know reasons. the criteria. Like, if we can see a predominantly white group of CEOs, they're all white. There is not a single African or a single woman or a single whatever on that group. Wouldn't you say that that is not representative I, of the human I race? Recognized, I recognize that there's a possibility there, but it seems extreme to think that all of these different people who are citing different criteria are all actually racist and that the reason that, that the criteria that they're citing don't actually apply. I think it's a little bit paranoid to say that every one of these lists are racist, that all of these people compiling these lists Well, are they're racist. certainly not representative of the human race. The thing and is that said, your, the list your criticism of Islam your criticism of Islam doesn't really, you're saying all these Muslim countries rank at the bottom, but there are plenty of African countries that are not Muslim, uh, Latin American countries, Eastern European countries, East Asian countries mm -hmm. that also rank very low. They're also, many of them are secular. Some of them have a lot of atheism actually because of the history of communism in Asia, for example, mm -hmm. and they rank very low. It's not because of Islam or even theism, it's just, you know, other factors like colonialism and the domination and authoritarianism of liberalism from Northwestern Europe, from the United States, mm -hmm. so that is we, causing that. <laughs> not because Islam is just inherently backwards. Once again, there's no way of knowing whether every one of these lists is racist, but it would say that it's suspicious. Yes, there's a disparity that, that, that Europe is favored. Is it favored because all of these different people compiling these lists for these different reasons are all secretly lying and they're racist? No, I think that's a bit ridiculous. So we could say based on your list that black and Hispanic societies are inferior. No. That's the list. Your list didn't have any Hispanic countries. It didn't have any black countries. I think it actually did. But Which I'd one? To, I'd have to go back over the whole thing. But it wouldn't matter because we're talking, one of the problems that we have when we're having these discussions, we have to have some common met metric, we have to have come some common fact. And I find that when I'm discussing politics, especially with somebody, there's not even a common fact. We, there's like nothing that anybody agrees on, whether no, the election agree. was stolen or whether it wasn't, whatever. We, can't, we don't have a any common thing that we can build on. And that's, what, that's the difficulty I'm having with you. What you call good is bad. And what you, the, what you Racism is bad. What you, you agree? Call, what, does, what you describe in your previous interview that I watched, what you're describing as a utopia is my dystopia, and apparently the opposite replies. Hey, this is like so if I offer, free, if, if I offer uh, freedom of religion, which atheists unilaterally support, 
because we believe in free thought, that you, should, you have the right, it's one of the most basic, fundamental rights, is the right to think and believe or not what you do for whatever reason makes sense to you. No religion likes that. They all want to control thought right inside your head, and Islam is among the worst of them. You, you have laws in certain countries, in certain Sharia countries. You, if you're Arab, for example, you are legally obliged in the UAE that you have to believe Islam. You can't have free thought. If you have free thought there, that's criminal. No, this is like a caricature. It's not a caricature. That's a fact. Okay, so all governments restrict certain forms of speech and certain forms of investigation. But we're talking about thought and belief. Even thought, even thought. You can't express certain thoughts. You can't Religion express certain ideas. Inhibits. Every country, every society no. restricts thought. Read Stanley no. Fish. There's not, there's okay, not let me finish. I let you speak. I let you speak. Let me finish my point. Read Stanley Fish, philosopher. Uh, eminent philosopher, his book, There Is No Such f Thing as Free Speech, and, is a, and it's a good thing too. Every society has to regulate expression and thought in order to preserve that community. So even if you go on social media and Facebook, they have what? Community guidelines. If you violate those community guidelines, you will get banned, you will get punished. Why? Do you, because you are disturbing the fabric of the community. That's the logic of it. That justifies you being banned. Presumably, you don't have a problem with that kind of banning, or you don't have a problem with the fact that you can't go around and um, you know, shout the N-word at everyone that you see. Presu presumably, that kind of speech should be restricted. Or are you an absolute free speech, you know, in favor of absolute no. free speech, and even that kind of expression should be allowed in society? Do you? The reason that those countries are at the bottom of these lists is because they have been the victims. Let me, let me answer your question, please. Let me answer your question. The reason that those countries are at the bottom of the list is because they're victims of the humanist, liberal, secular, colonial powers, neo-imperial powers that have dominated them for the past 250 years. That's, that is the explanation. The challenge was to Arin because his claim was that these countries are the best because they are secular. Well, guess what? There are plenty of African countries that are secular. There are plenty of South American, Eastern European countries that are secular, but they're at the bottom tier. Secularism apparently didn't help them uh, be, get to the level of prosperity that we find in America and Europe. What is the explanation for that? Arendt had no explanation and he fumbled when trying to, when I asked him if it's racist to consider that all the best societies to live in are the, these white European countries. He didn't have an answer to that, but that was a problem for his view, not my view. Yeah, the explanation that I gave that he, yeah, I did answer your question. I said, yes, it is because of imperialism. Yes, it is because of colonialism. Yes, because imperialism is racist. Imperialism dominated non-whites. Imperialism and colonialism is racist. Yes, bingo, you got it. So I, said, well, I want to ask you this question. When an atheist says, Islam is not good at science, therefore Islam's wrong, there's something inherently wrong with Islam, at this current moment, because we haven't won so many Nobel Prizes, how would you respond to that? Well, I mean, first you have to admit the obvious is that <clears throat> in terms of our <clears throat> um, scientific productivity, in terms of our ingenuity, of course, we're falling behind quite substantially compared to the rest of the world. However, um, you know, the most holistic answer, the most appropriate answer here would be that, you know, in the 1400 years of our history, we're still in a relatively new era. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not this is not like this has been going on for the past fourteen hundred years. <laughs> you know, this has been only maybe a hundred years or so since we've been this behind. Um, and comparatively, uh, Western civilization as we know it today is still a baby in yeah. comparison. You know, so they're I guess you're going through their golden age. <clears throat> so you know, to sort of judge all of all Muslims or all of Islamic history on the basis of of you know uh, <laughs> a very small percentage of our history i think is, is also quite fallacious <clears throat> um that said um you know i would say that you know eventually we can come back if we start to reassess our paradigm and and move forward in that regard you know try to rely on islamic ethos more than on western ethos and paradigms in order to move forward 
<clears throat> and then eventually, inshallah, you know, we'll get there because um, all civilizations fluctuate in terms of their power, in terms of their material wealth and progress. So, um, you know, it's it is probably just a matter of time that the that the the powers will shift. I mean, as we see today, even Russia and China are are pretty much about to overcome the Western world in terms of everything, you know? So, uh, and that's why Westerners are actually quite scared. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if that's the full answer, but you know. Yeah, I mean, I think we need to remind people that every civilization goes through a peak and a drop, right? Mm. You go up and down. And uh, just being at the top of those 15 minutes of fame, then pointing out the rest of civilization and saying, we're number one, you know, <laughs> It's gonna, it's gonna come back and bite you when people actually take over. But I wanted to ask you this question: Is the very fact that Muslims are far, far behind in scientific uh, progress and therefore also economic progress, does that mean that Islam itself there's some sort of problem with it, or is Islam oh. is the cause of it? No, I mean, I think like we discussed last time. I mean. Um, Islam, I mean, it's just not possible because, like I said, if you look at the Golden Age within our history, it's just not possible to suggest that Islam is opposed to scientific inquiry or scientific ingenuity when we have so much evidence to the contrary from our historical past, obviously. So, you know, that we, that can be recreated, you know, brought back. To, so, I mean, it, it's very obvious that Islam, since the very early, uh, since the very beginning, was not a detriment to science or opposed to science in any way, shape, or form. Um, <clears throat> that said, the material progress that's currently being enjoyed by Western civilization and others is, like I said, still relatively new. And a lot of people don't really realize is that this is, we live in a post-World War II era yeah. where a lot of our technology and science was developed right after a massive war that slaughtered, you know, millions of people. Uh, so, um, and even our political systems are, are largely post-World War II. This is, this current, the, the situation that we're in right now, a lot of people don't realize is so new that it's not even like most people in history would have never experienced such such change or uh such a transition yeah um and, and a lot of people take it for granted they assume like the world's been like this for the past like thousand years or something <laughs> so, you know, like you know like they think oh this has been the way the world is now is exactly how it was you know when my ancestors were like, or somewhere during the enlightenment or something you know it's like people have this very strange perception uh, of how things are so but it's like been less what like less than 100 years since world war ii so oh. i'm on mute um, okay. right, yeah. also, um you mentioned obviously world war ii and most of our technology was was developed uh yeah, post world war ii and the after effects of that and then the cold war but this whole idea that if a civilization is good at science therefore that civilization is somehow morally superior oh. i mean look at the nazis the nazis were probably the most advanced yeah. uh if not one of the most advanced at one particular time in the late 30s um and they developed i mean operation paperclip which some people may be aware of uh after world war ii where russian and uh soviet and americans went in there to try and grab the nazis uh, scientists because they're so brilliant so mm. jet technology v2 rockets yep. all this type of stuff was developed by them and a lot of people don't recognize that, you know, if you want to use, if you want to use that argument, it's logical conclusion is Nazism must have been a good thing because they're so good at yeah. science. I agree with that assessment. <clears throat> you know, that is a very good example. A lot of civilizations in the past as well have, you know, been more technologically advanced, but it did not necessitate that they were more civilized or somehow uh, better civilizations overall, because a civilization simply is not simply defined by its material or its technological uh, wealth or progress. It's also defined by its moral output. And yeah. things like this and you know and like you just mentioned nazis you know a lot of people don't realize this either the nazis were very close to getting they could have gotten the bomb before the united states and if they did this would not be the same world right now you know if, if hitler would have been more focused on building jets yeah. than killing jews yeah. the Ger germany would have ruled would be ruling the world right now let me just put it that way people don't realize <laughs> and then everyone would be like yeah nazis are cool you know, that's the moral paradigm we should all be following. <laughs> so, you know, they need to rethink their <laughs> their reality a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and also that 
it's a it's an ironic fact that states which are militarized, states which mm. are more warlike, are going to be better at science. So this mm. whole idea of linking science to humanism is quite paradoxical because science makes quantum leaps during times of war, and usually it's the military which drives scientific research. Yeah, and you know, um, going back to the Nazis, I hate using them as examples, but it's I mean it's just true. Even a lot of our medicine, yep. a lot of things that I'm not. <laughs> I really don't want to get into details because it's quite disgusting, but, you know, uh, the Nazis um, experimented on Jewish people. And that's how we figured out a lot of things about the human body and some other things like that. You know, and we, we were actually um, utilizing a lot of those advances today, despite the fact that they were done in horrible ways. <clears throat> so that said, um, yeah, I agree. You can't connect science to any necessarily to any one um, meta-ethical paradigm, um, although values are tied to science to a great extent, to suggest that one is ethically superior by virtue of having certain weapons or certain technology, you know what I mean, doesn't really make much sense, especially when that technology is misused. Yeah. Like, for example, I would never say that whoever has a nuke nuclear weapons is somehow superior ethically, especially knowing what those things can do. <laughs> yeah. And I think you're, you're touching upon an important topic here, uh, which is to do with values. Um, sometimes uh, atheists mischaracter mischaracterize science as if it has inbuilt values of liberalism and humanism mm. and you know, these types of things. Um, and they say, well, science doesn't care, or science, they talk about, they deify science. Um, but wouldn't you say that you need some sort of values before you do science? As it's, not even, science values. it's not even that you just need them, is that everyone always brings their values to the table. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter what you, it, you could say that all day, oh yeah, my science doesn't have any values attached to it, that's nonsense, because there are people behind it. I mean, you know, you want to, like, for example, let's look at the United States. Um, we have probably the best health facilities in the world. We have some of the best health technology in the world. We're doing horrible right now in terms of the coronavirus for a number of reasons, um, largely attached to our values, largely attached to the incompetence of our own government, its own values. Uh, and our medical system, you know, our health system is certainly does, is not based on any real humanistic values. I'm going to be frank. I mean, we have the most expensive healthcare system in the world. Most people can't even get basic healthcare. You know, you're, you're better off if you get like a flu, even here, it's like you're better off just trying to suffer it out on your own at home instead of going to a doctor because, you know, you go into debt before you're dead. Um, so, you know, there are people literally on the streets in the United States right now who are going to die yeah. because they can't afford to go to a doctor, like literally walking, like even in the UK, I don't know how it is in Pakistan, but in the UK, you know, a lot of people, they, they complain about like the NHS and stuff. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've always complained. I'm like, I wish we had the NHS. Yeah. I wish everyone would just yeah, shut absolutely. up. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, like you have no idea how difficult it is. Like 30% of my paycheck goes towards healthcare alone. Yeah. yeah. Alone. I'm not yeah. talking about everything else I have to pay. Yeah. You know, and, and that's and I still got to pay out of pocket when I go to a doctor. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going on a rant right now, but, you know, no, no, no. So. Absolutely right. I mean, being a scientific society doesn't mean you're going to be using science in all the right ways. Where did the refugees come from? I don't mean did they come from Syria or Afghanistan that we know. But why did they come? They came because of war. Where did the war come from? from my country, from the CIA, which first started to overthrow the Afghan government back in 1979. The U.S. has been involved in Afghanistan in war, both covert and overt, for nearly 40 years. Iraq, absolutely against international law, of course, often called the most dreadful foreign policy decision in modern times. 
an absolutely unprovoked war, killed hundreds of thousands, displaced millions, created disaster, blowback, and refugees. Where was Europe's foreign policy? I kept looking. Is, is there a foreign policy? I, I even took out my microscope. I couldn't even find a microscopic foreign policy because there's no foreign policy to speak of. So the idea that the only policy is to debate should we accept refugees or not is not right. The real policy is stop the wars that are producing them. <laughs>